What we're going to look at here is a lump sum or basket purchase of property, plant, and equipment. This is a purchase of a group of plant assets at a single lump sum price here. So you're going to buy a group of assets here and they're just going to pay one lump or one total price here for these assets. And uh, what we have to do is we have to allocate the total purchase cost among the assets in proportion to the appraised fair values of the assets at the exchange date here. So what are we talking about here? We're going to have uh, Corporation A here is going to have purchased some assets here from either a company that's going out of business or a company that's selling off all its assets and they're going to buy them here for one uh, lump sum price or one total price here. So what we have to do is we have to determine the appraised fair value or the fair value of the assets in the individually here uh, that they're buying here and we have to allocate them here based on the cost that uh, Corporation A is going to pay for this, these total, the total lump sum of these assets and we have uh, several ways to handle that here to determine the fair value use in an appropriate valuation method and I'm just going to point out three of them here you have the market approach here that's where micro market prices of comparable assets would be used or the income approach that's where you convert some cash flows and earnings into the present value here of the assets and then the cost approach that would just be the current replacement cost. So for our example here we're going to, uh, Corporation A is going to buy some land, some building and, and some equipments here all for one lump sum price and let's look at our example here. So Corporation A gave is going to give 25,000 shares of its $100 par value common stock in exchange for the assets here and the total market value of the stock here is $180 per share at the purchase date here of these assets. And I'm just throwing this out here just to establish a cost here. So we have to establish here a cost on the uh, lump, uh, lump sum cost or price here that we're paying for these assets. So uh, our cost of property, plant, and equipment or the assets purchased here would be 25,000 shares here times the market value here. We have an established market value here on these shares at $180 each. So the total amount here is for $4,500,000. So that's what they're going to pay for these assets here. And the assets here, we're just throwing out the appraised fair value here. We have the land, $800,000 building. 2,400,000 and the equipment 1,600,000. So the total fair value or the appraised value of these assets here, the basket purchase price, there was $4,800,000. So you can see here we have the uh, appraised fair value at $4,800,000 here and we have the cost here at $4,500,000. So we have to allocate this cost among these assets here that we bought here. So we just use this general equation here. You take the fair value of the assets, uh, uh, asset, that's the individual fair value here, and divide it by the fair value of the sum of the assets here. And what I have here is I have it color coded here just so you can use it as a quick reference here. And you take that fractional amount here times the cost here. That's the cost that has to be allocated. That was that $4,500,000 cost here. And that would, um, the multiplication of these this fractional amount here times the cost equals the cost allocated to the particular asset. So for our land here, uh, let's just go using our equation here. A fair value of the assets here is $800,000 here for our land. And then the total amount here of the appraised value is $4,800,000. We divide that here into the $800,000 and then multiply that here times the cost of $4,500,000 gives us the cost allocated to the asset here of $750,000. And we do the same here for our building and equipment. Just take the fair value of the asset here and divide it by the fair value of the sum of the assets here and then multiply it here times the cost and it gives you the cost allocated to the asset here. So the total allocated cost, we allocated all these costs proportionately here and the total allocated cost is $4,500,000. That's the uh, price that we paid here for these assets. So it's just as simple as that here. But the big problem that you're going to run into here when you're allocating these uh, this lump sum or the single sum purchase is to establish the uh, fair value here of the each of these assets here and I'm just throwing that out as a praise fair value here and then you also have to establish the cost here that you're paying for those assets and you can run into problems in either case here so let's just look at this uh, cost here so <clears throat> in this case we exchange some stock here for these assets but in some uh, cases here you're not going to the cost is not determinable such as trading stock 
at an unknown market price. So there's, let's just say there's unknown market price here uh, on the stock. And then you would, in this case, you would use the fair value of the asset itself. So the fair value of the asset here itself would be used as the allocated cost. And you can see that here uh, just through our multiplication here. So if we took the uh, our fair value of our asset, say at the purchased our fair value of our purchased asset here as the cost you can just substitute that four million eight hundred thousand dollar into your cost here and it's going to cancel out uh, our fractional amount here when we're trying to allocate that cost and the allocated cost here uh, based on the appraised fair value is just what's shown here as I talked about it here. So the other thing I want to look at here is just uh, very simply here is the journal entries here so our land we would have debited that here uh, and just looking at it here the 750,000 here for the land the building 2,250,000 equipment 1,500,000 and just because we use this common stock here as their cost basis here or exchange for these assets we just put down the par amount here at 2,500,000 dollars here and the additional paid in capital uh, would be two million dollars here and that's simply a balancing entry here we knew what the par amount here was at uh, by 25,000 shares times $100 par here. But the additional paid in capital is just simply the difference here between our e equipment cost or our cost of our assets of $4,500,000 here and the uh, par amount here of $2,500,000 gives us a balance here of $2 million. Uh, $2 two million dollars here so just went over it here you can just look at this formula once again here very simple the formula for our allocation here uh, the problem is is coming up with our appraised fair values here of our assets and also establishing a proper market cost here or cost that we're going to paid for these assets because it isn't always cash deals it has to be something else here and then you have to determine what your cost would be